Hello everyone. I'm really excited to have a very very interesting conversation with Professor Ashutosh Modi from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at IIT Kanpur. He's deeply embedded into the areas of artificial intelligence, machine learning and natural language processing. Welcome sir and thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. We'll uh, first uh, I want to talk about uh, your main area which there are multiple projects that you're doing in the field of artificial intelligence. I want to know what is a day in your life when you're surrounded by artificial intelligence all around you. No, no, so there's nothing so special about my day. My day is like a sort of a usual day. So usually like during the semester uh mornings are usually I keep my classes. So I have lectures. So I usually uh, so I do uh, teach two main subjects. One is the NNP uh, course, natural language processing course yeah. and the other one is the reinforcement learning course. So each one is in one of the semester. So and uh, usually the mornings are with the classes and post uh, classes I usually have these meetings uh, with some of my collaborators some of them are in industry so like discussion about the uh, the project that is on on going and possible research ideas and those things and then um, after that we usually I get involved with my students so they are also doing pursuing different projects so right. I have a detailed discussion with them like I mean they might bring with something so we have a detailed discussion and those kind of things that's how my day usually say it's a great balance of a day uh, if i may say uh, so I'm talking about some of your projects so uh, i know there's one that you're working with uh, trying to facilitate and ease some of the pending cases in our indian court of uh, law so uh, can you tell us briefly what these projects are how you're um, designing products that is going to help in solving some of these issues yeah yeah perks yeah so uh, see the uh, the if you look at the indian legal system so uh the current state of the indian legal system is that that we have a huge uh, pendency of uh, uh, cases so just to give you some uh, estimate there so if you there are around like 50 million pending cases at different levels like wow uh, like at district court and high court and supreme court all these levels so it's it's a huge number and if you i bet mean, there was one estimate where where uh, one of the retired judges he said that uh, if we stop filing cases today and wanting to solve all these cases in the ground we end it 50 to 400 years my so god that's the scale of the problem that we are looking at and of course uh, you cannot solve these problems manually so you need some intervention via some technology right and that's where uh, ai comes into picture so Wait. what we are trying to do is we are trying to develop technologies which could streamline and make the system more efficient right right so for example uh, since these ai technologies particularly the nlp technologies can ingest huge amount of documents and then understand those documents and then come up with new insights and then the, these could be useful for for example re retrieving certain information so usually like uh, when a lawyer is or a judge is writing a case document then they usually cite the previous precedents right, right. and uh, uh, traditionally what they have done is they have just uh, used their experience and memory but i mean as the cases have been going this doesn't scale up so that's where uh, yeah, like one of the system that we have been developing is where it can suggest you the based on the facts of the case suggest you the previous precedents that could be applicable in this right, case right so that's one thing and then also uh, if you look at the indian legal documents these are sort of unstructured they are like one big uh, monolithic text uh, so it's sort of difficult to make out any information from that so what we are trying to do is we are trying to develop some automatic methods which can okay. sort of divide these documents uh, more semantically in the sense that Uh, it can tell uh, uh, where you have the facts written, where you have the preamble, where you have the arguments being said, uh, issues, statutes, and all sorts of things, basically. So that basically makes it easier for the people who are working on it. Yeah, exactly. It makes it easier, and also makes uh, the retrieval of information easier, right? At most, yeah. someone wants to retrieve only the facts, then it gets much easier. Absolutely. So that's one thing, and then one uh, one uh, interesting project that we have been working on is uh, uh, trying to. Uh, predict the outcome of a case so you oh, like okay. uh, you are like suppose someone files a case in supreme court so uh, i mean traditionally a judge will give the outcome whether the appeal is accepted or denied right so what we are trying to do is we are we are trying to automate the system where uh, 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 there is a ai model which will take in the document and give the outcome but also provide the explanation why this particular outcome has been um, okay. given right okay so uh, so the idea is not to replace a judge we if, I, i'm not uh, <laughs> saying that We'll have that would have been my next question. Yeah, I'm not suggesting that we'll have robot judges in the in future, but what I'm trying to say is, this can definitely augment a judge in the sense that it can uh, give the recommendations to a judge along with the explanation, which can help to make things much more faster, right? So these, uh, yeah. So 
these are some of the main projects that have been working in so in something like this if i may add uh, the human angle still remains but yeah. your the the process just becomes easier the facilitation yeah. is the kind of provider yeah definitely so see the the one thing you must understand like uh, the legal uh, specifically the indian legal system is uh, belongs to a common law system so there uh, some sort of subjectivity always comes into picture because the way you interpret law differs from person to person right and uh, one lawyer might interpret it differently other might interpret it differently Absolutely. and that's why these cases sometimes stay, uh, they get very complicated right so because of that the human aspect has to be there i mean you cannot uh, completely uh, alienate the ai technology from the human aspect mm-hmm. so they have to sort of develop in symbiosis with each other got it got it uh, there is another uh, just from the human aspect of it there's another project that you're working on uh, which is on detecting the emotions of a human being mm-hmm. based on their audio yeah uh, then that's not that it's not just oh, it's it's not just audio actually it's both video and audio and everything okay okay so for example let's say you have two people we it could be just two of us we are talking and then the, there is an uh, ai system which can detect the emotion state of the person okay so that's the kind of system we are working on developing and this has the uh, various uh, use cases in fact we are working with one of the companies which is uh, sort of trying to use our system uh, so the idea is that you uh, so in their case what they want to do they want to understand the customer behavior so they have a lot of clients and uh, they have a uh, very frequent interaction with the clients right okay. uh, so uh, and uh, the clients in depth of interact uh, free, very frequently with the uh, with the customer then uh, the clients want to know how customer feels about their product right. and are they happy or they have any complaints and those kind of things so there if you have a system which could uh, automatically detect what sort of emotions they have about the product that can help a lot right so that's one pot- pot- possible uh, use case but it, oh, another use case which i see is that it could be useful uh, particularly in case of mental health so nowadays i mean the, the world has become very sort of uh, chaotic in some sense right yeah. and there's also a lot of stress related things have come up and uh, specifically after covid where there has there was a lot of uh, social seclusion Absolutely. things have Absolutely. got more pronounced yeah. so uh, so uh, what the system could uh, help is like detecting things like depression and anxiety those kind of things uh basically uh, it can monitor the uh, facial features along with the body movement and everything and try to uh, s- come up with the certain metrics which can tell uh, s- some state of the mental health of the person makes sense absolutely yeah yeah so these are some of the use cases and in fact some people are also trying to put these kind of technologies into car where uh, like a car could monitor your emotional profile and could come up with suggestions when it is not a good time to drive so very interesting man yes absolutely yes. so probably we'll save a lot of accidents yeah exactly like that so if you are like very drowsy or if you are like very angry it's not a good time to drive yes, so yeah. those kind of use cases are also uh, is something like that already in implements in talks or uh, uh, when do we see things like these getting yeah so, so so some of these are actually as i said like we are collaborating with one of the companies uh, right. for understanding customer behavior yes. so those things are there and some people have also started uh using it for uh, monitoring mental health right. right so those kind of things are uh, there uh, they are slowly coming the car thing is still not there still in the experimental state but then, i'm hopeful that it will come fine absolutely i'm hopeful too um now so we will uh, read it back into coming back to education it uh, kanpur system not just it kanpur i would say just generally education where we are going kind of a thing um in in uh, holistic picture so um these are all like such um, domains that uh, we are yet concentrating a lot on our traditional um, subjects and traditional because obviously uh, a baseline and a base understanding fundamentally understanding for people who are going to be even getting into such kind of dom- uh, new age domains but the fundamentals are still important but how are we looking at say for example here like the subjects you are teaching at what stage are we intervening how are the students making sure that their fundamentals are right their base is laid down correct and yet they are able to explore and go forward with these kind of domains which are still exploring uh, still if i am uh, evolving so much then yeah yeah you are absolutely right so uh, yeah uh, i also uh, have the same sort of uh, uh, no, uh, and i i sort of think in the, on the same line that fundamentals are really important so uh, so here also like uh, particularly when you talk about cs education right like because i'm in the cs department so i'm yes. sort of saying about that so uh, like uh, we encourage the students to develop these fundamentals uh, in initial like for like for example if they are coming for undergrad so initial first two years they concentrate on these fundamentals right i mean uh, the C- there are certain cs fundamentals which will be you useful even for uh, understanding ai right. so those uh, fundamentals have to be made very very strong and that's what we focus on in the initial two years 
and post that then they try to go into different specializations like AI could be one, cyber security could be another. So there are different possible specialization. Uh, and there also we start with, uh, see AI also has its own fundamentals. Uh, so we try to build the base there as well yes. by uh, introducing some basic courses and which have more sort of rigor basically. So, so that they develop strong fundamentals and once they have that rigor, they can develop any new technology based on that. So that's what we focus on. And we encourage students uh, to make these uh, their fundamentals in, in let's say in AI very strong. And then post that, we encourage them to do different projects and uh, use those things that they have learned to apply to different applications or develop uh, some new research out of that. So that's how the progression goes. Right, sir. Uh, so th I think nowadays when students look at computer science or even like technology, obviously uh, digital security, AI, they are the first buzzwords that come to everyone's mind. So I think a lot of people also have an expectation that at the moment they come here, they want to get into those kind of domains. Mm -hmm. So uh, how... Also, one is the study aspect of it. The other, like you said, get into some projects, do some internships like that. So uh, what would your advice be on to how to manage all of these things? When is the right time for what? What should you concentrate on in the four years of, you briefly mentioned the basics and then going further. But how to manage the expectation or the want of getting into this before uh, fixing in years? I would, also, uh, uh, I would also say one thing that there is a lot of hype around AI and absolutely, all. absolutely. So, uh, the, too much hype actually. So, so uh, I, I would suggest don't go by the hype, but go by what you really are interested in doing, right? And what you are really curious about. Right. So, um, but the path is more or less same. You have to first build the fundamentals. So, I mean, if you suppose if you make a building without a strong base, then the building will fall at some absolutely for sure, right? So, so the first thing you have to do is make your base very strong. And once your base is strong, then you can always um, build on top of that. So my suggestion is still that make your fundamentals strong, understand mm -hmm. things very in depth and very, uh, especially the mathematical aspect of it has to be understood very in depth because what has happened recently is that uh, you have all these popular courses coming on the internet and they touch upon AI from a very, very high level. Absolutely. Yeah. They don't go into the in depth, the mathematical uh, aspects of it. And that's what actually distinguishes you from any regular AI learner, right? So that mathematical backing will actually help you to excel more than uh, anyone who is just doing some Correct. online course. Mm -hmm. right? So really understanding what they need to do and not just getting influenced by the fads around. Yeah, I think exactly. that's the yeah. uh, key from all of this. Mm -hmm. uh, so in terms of our ecosystem that we have here at IIT Kanpur, mm -hmm. there is a very strong um, uh, network and an ecosystem in terms of whether it is projects, whether it is uh, um, innovation, whether it is our data sciences, whether it is emerging technologies, we are really like leading whether it is startups and you know um, patents, all of these things. So how are we managing to kind of stay ahead or um, pursue so much of like um, you know any of these frontiers what is it that we are doing that is actually working for us? Yeah, so so, so the really good thing about ITK is that uh, uh, like students and faculty, everyone has this academic freedom which gives them the opportunity to follow their curiosity and explore uh, right. different areas, right? And that also sort of brings in diversity, right. which uh, definitely promotes every, uh, the entire system. And uh, plus, uh, we, uh, and uh, as you might be knowing that uh, we were ranked like, I think, second in the uh, QS ranking for data science category. Absolutely. Right? And that so that sort of reflects there, right? I mean, we're... In fact, even third for computer science yeah, education. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, if you look at, and also from the... Uh, uh, from the point of view of our ecosystem, we have a pretty nice uh, startup ecosystem here. Like uh, the incubation center is like, I think one of the topmost as per the NIF, uh, NIR. Is right? In terms of innovation, we are the top of the yeah. building. So that also sort of promotes uh, the, I mean, it's sort of a circle which goes in, right? Giant. That uh, So, I mean, the, given the freedom, you do research and that sort of tends to get into some product or some uh, some uh, sort of uh, use case of as a technology right. and that leads to some sort of a startup and then that again promotes more research and that circle goes on that's how we sort of excel there then personally for me i feel the uh, opportunities that students can get to plug in into each of these systems that is what also is yeah definitely yeah. so as i said like they have the freedom to explore all different areas right so yeah. We, we don't put restriction that you have to go to this particular stream and you cannot go to. Absolutely. And in fact, uh, it's not just computer science. Any. Students from uh, other uh, branches also can uh, uh, take courses from uh, uh, like AI based courses from computer science. Like All right. many of my students. Have, that's, in, that's very, very good. So many students, uh, many of my students who work with me on uh, 
different research projects they were not from computer science but from other departments so that there is no like a uh, hard and fast rule that you have to be in there are no boundaries you know. yeah there are no boundaries at that place so that freedom actually uh, yeah, helps a lot yeah absolutely opinion um before we come to a near the end of this uh, conversation um i will bring up the very basic and the most uh, uh, talked about topic in every drawing room in this country i think which is that is ai going to take our jobs so, what do you say <laughs> Yeah, that's a very uh, sort of a hot question nowadays, yeah. and also a sort of a controversial question. So uh, I have sort of a different uh, uh, viewpoint here. So uh, so uh, maybe I'll give you a little bit context before I yeah. tell my viewpoint. So like with the start of industrial revolution, the machines slowly started coming, and uh, many of the jobs which were manually done were taken up by machine. Absolutely right. Uh, so obviously there was a replacement of certain jobs, but there were other jobs which got created as well. Right. when machines came and same thing happened when computers started came come, coming more into the personal uh, like more like personal computers started coming so uh, on the whole i mean the uh, there was progress uh, in the in the human society like right. with the advent yeah. of these uh, things space green so i think similar thing would also happen with ai ai is going to augment us with more powers and more skills and many of the mundane things would be taken up by ai which we should really need to spend our time and those could be done by uh, so for example you might have a robot which would do the cleaning for your room so you yeah. then you get free and then you can function on more other things right Absolutely. more creative things uh, and in fact uh, ai uh, so uh, especially like in natural sciences there's lot more to research and lot more to explore right and that's where you could actually help, take help of ai to explore many things which you earlier could not do too right so that uh, that computational advantage that you get from ai that is going to help you a lot and that will also create some new jobs correct right which uh, so i i see uh, momentarily there might be some little bit of uh, oscillations there but uh, things will settle down and some new jobs will come and humans will also adapt to new settings and uh, or on the whole i see that society is going to make more progress then and lastly before we finish the uh, bringing this uh, back into our education uh, systems uh, with the presence of so many ai tools out there How do you see it affecting the learning curve of uh, students? Is AI helping them? Is it taking a bit of learning away from them? Where are your views on that? Yeah, see, uh, yeah, as I said, like with the uh, advent of these AI technologies, the education system also has to evolve, right? So earlier, I mean, we didn't have these tools like ChatGPT and all these. Now we have these tools. So now uh, uh, are the the learning. out uh, and learning outcomes of education should be different from what it used to be earlier sure. so now see information is all there i mean you just have to type something and you get all the knowledge but how do you make use of that knowledge in creative ways that is something the machines so, yeah. are not will not be able to uh, that is where uh, you uh, you as a human can uh, make a change uh, make bring a change basically right so the education has to more uh, has to be focused on those lines like how to uh make use of the information that is being provided to you how to make sense out of it right, right? and what to do with it basically right so that sort of uh, learning outcome has to be designed and this is uh, sort of a very different from like rote learning which used to be there right, right. just mug up a lot of facts and then uh, we just spit it out in in some of the i think no that is not required now uh, so now given that uh, we, we assume that you are going in an exam you have access to chat gpt and then you are asked a question where you have to apply your knowledge to do something uh, some some task with right that's where uh, the so the lear- uh, the learning is going to be a bit more sort of uh, um, uh, use case oriented also right like i mean how do you make use of things that you've learned but also uh, more on the theoretical side you will still have a uh, learning uh, where you will uh, try to understand the fundamentals of the technology itself and try to make it even better hmm. right so those kind of things have to be sort of uh, a bit balanced with like absolutely yeah. great Thank you so much sir uh, for being with us. We'll wrap up over here. For everyone who's listening, you you still have your work cut out for you. AI is helping, but not that much. You still have to work hard and hope to see you soon next time.